Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tuesday with Luther. This past Sunday, the gospel reading was John 20, 19 through 31. Christ enters the locked room, showing the apostles his hands, the scars, and the spear scar in his side. He preaches to them three times, Peace be with you. And he breathes on them the Holy Spirit and says, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven them. If you retain or do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. He then appears to Thomas, showing him his hands and side again, saying, Stop disbelieving, Thomas, and believe. There's a treatise that Luther wrote in the 1520s called Against the Heavenly Prophets. It's a great little work by him. It's not very large. He wrote it in response to a group of theologians, two of them, the most prominent ones being Andreas Karlstadt, who was a professor at the University of Wittenberg with Luther for a while, and also Thomas Münzer. These two men argued that the Holy Spirit is given outside of physical means, specifically the sacraments of baptism and the Lord's Supper. They said that those are works because there is a physical object to them. Rather, the Spirit is a spirit. He's not a physical being, but a spiritual one. One must receive the Spirit spiritually. Luther even going far as far in his little treatise against the heavenly prophets to say, Munzer has swallowed the Holy Spirit, feathers and all. <laughs> They were known as the fanatics, these heavenly prophets that came with the holy word. Luther only went so far. He never did away with all the stuff of Rome. The heavenly prophets were here to do away with all of it and bring us into a spiritual kingdom. Now, one of their problems was this was a very meditative theology, remembering the things Jesus did for us. And that was your comfort, was meditating on Christ, meditating on the cross. One of my favorite passages in there, and I'm actually not reading it from the Luther's works, but from here, the Treasury of Daily Prayer, it was one of the passages last week in the Easter week, and I would really recommend that you get this, especially if you're a layman, get this book from CPH and use it for your daily devotions. It has an Old Testament reading, a New Testament reading, a psalm, and then a writing from a theologian, be it a Lutheran theologian, one of the early church theologians, maybe medieval theologians, and it has a hymn verse to sing, a prayer, and then it has reading suggestions to the Book of Concord. So very good, but I'm going to read this passage from Against the Heavenly Prophets to show that Karl Stott and Munster said we are more meditative on the word, meditating on what Christ has done for us. Now hear how Luther sees how we receive salvation. Luther says this, So that our readers may the better perceive our teaching, I shall clearly and broadly describe it. We treat of the forgiveness of sins in two ways. First, how it is achieved in one. Second, how it is distributed and given to us. Christ has achieved it on the cross, it is true, but he has not distributed or given it on the cross. He has not won it in the supper or sacrament. There he has distributed and given it through the word, as also in the gospel where it is preached. He has won it once and for all on the cross, but the distribution takes place continuously before and after from the beginning to the end of the world. For inasmuch as he has determined once to achieve it, it made no difference to him whether he distributed it before or after through his word, as can easily be proved from Scripture. But now there is neither need nor time to do so. If now I seek the forgiveness of sins, I do not run to the cross, for I will not find it given there. Nor must I hold to the suffering of Christ, as Dr. Karlstadt trifles, in knowledge or remembrance, for I will not find it there either. But I will find in the sacrament or gospel the word which distributes presents, offers, and gives to me that forgiveness which was won on the cross. Therefore, Luther has rightly taught that whoever has a bad conscience from his sins should go to the sacraments and obtain comfort, not because of the bread and wine, not because of the body and blood of Christ, but because of the word which in the sacrament offers, presents, and gives the body and blood of Christ, given and shed for me. Is that not clear enough? 
So what Luther's saying is, Christ once and for all purchased and won atonement. That's where he made the payment for sin, was on the cross of Calvary. He does not die again. He died one time for all. But now he distributes the benefits of the cross, hands over the benefits of the cross, meaning the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation, not by telling us, hey, remember what I did for you, but instead he actually gives us forgiveness, life, and salvation in holy baptism, in absolution, in the gospel proclaimed, and in the Holy Supper, the Lord's Supper. So when we desire comfort in this burdened life, when we need forgiveness of our sin, when we need absolution for our doubt, when we need peace for our anxiety, we don't try to contemplate how much God loves us. We actually come and hear. The Holy Spirit calls us to worship, to receive the benefits of the cross. So in your baptismal life, don't try to be the stoic one who says, well, I can rely not on my piety, maybe. We won't say those words, but it's not that bad for me. I'm okay. I'm all right. I can bear the burden. No, you can't. That's why Christ died for you. Let him bear the burden. Let him take the heavy yoke of sin off your shoulders and bear it so that you may be righteous. You may be holy. You may be forgiven. So contemplate this this week. Where does Jesus distribute your salvation? It didn't happen 2,000 years ago because you weren't there. It comes to you now. You don't make a decision for Christ. He made the decision for you once and for all, and now he forgives you your sin. So let us be comforted in the means of grace, in the marks of the church, the means of grace, the word and the sacraments for the forgiveness of our sins. For there do we receive the cross of our Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless each and every one of you this week. May you be strengthened in your baptism, comforted in the Lord's Supper, and confident in the word as it is proclaimed to you in the gospel. God bless you.